Speaking of of people missing the point sometimes, I have an update on that thing that I said and then reversed course on, and now I'm just like, I don't know what to do. Okay, you know how I said I was oh, just going to start, I was going to just start shadow banning people who were just, like, made my brain hurt. And then the next week I was like, you know what? I shadow banned like five people and then I was like, no, this is, this is not, this isn't helping anything anyway. It's going to do nothing for improving the quality of discourse because it's an endless sea of, of bad takes or, or whatever else. And, and I don't want to create an environment where people feel like by, by expressing their thoughts, they could, you know, end up shadow banned, which is like sucky, right? Like that's never really been our approach to community feedback. Never been the goal. Yeah. Well, you can, you can find a nugget of gold in a mountain of poo and that's that's always kind of been my philosophy about it so i guess i better keep all the poo so that there's a chance i'll find some gold then the next day i read this so this is on our 4070 ti review linus dyson made everyone post a review at the same time we don't work with them anymore and we don't condone this behavior also linus when a new computer part launches Yes, corporate daddy, we'll post at the same time as everyone. Why don't I just shadow ban that person? <laughs> Why not? A, that first thing never happened. We worked with Dyson after that. The part that was yeah, bad... We just, we just thought it was kind of stupid. Yeah, the part that was bad was that without telling everybody that everyone else would be posting these vacuum cleaner videos at exactly the same time, they had like a, an embargo lift on sponsored vacuum cleaner videos and it was it was a fiasco a yeah it was it, but i never said we wouldn't work with them anymore and i never said we don't condone a, a coordinated product launch um also linus when a new compar computer part launches no it's not yes corporate daddy will post at the same time as everyone it's Yes, viewer, we understand that once the news cycle is over, you're not going to watch it. Like a perfect example of this is we pushed back on separate NDA lifts for unboxings. Yeah. Um, yeah. Hard when that started to materialize. I think one of the first to do it in the IT space was NVIDIA. <laughs> And I'm so surprised. I already knew that, but like, yeah, it shouldn't well, be surprising to anybody. Yeah, you were you were there. You yeah. were literally there yeah. when there was like this separate unboxing embargo. That who was it? Paul, I think, technically didn't break because the card was just there and open and not in a box or whatever. Was was that how it I went down? Something about so, that. it was either Paul yeah. or Kyle. It was one of them. I don't know. Yeah. Uh, but the point is that um, we pushed back hard on these on these separate NDAs and separate embargo dates for unboxings compared to full reviews. Now, I still don't mind that as much as long as the embargo lift for the full review is at the same time as sales availability. That's fine, because that means before you're taking people's money, they will have an opportunity to see the product properly evaluated. But I do um, think that a separate NDA lift for unboxings uh, so, I mean, we're, we're up to like three NDAs for a product launch at this point. There's the announcement embargo, there's the unboxing embargo, and then there's the review embargo. And then sometimes they'll try and sneak another one in there, like, like a preview embargo where you can run specific titles or, or whatever else. And it's gotten kind of ridiculous, but you guys have to understand why they're doing it. It's because they are leveraging... The, the short attention span uh, or really the shortness of the news cycle to great effect. And this, this is one of those things that I just, I, I don't know what you guys want me to do because I don't like it, but you guys are ultimately the ones who create this game that I'm playing. I see a lot of people blame the algorithm, okay, for uh, clickable titles and thumbnails, right? Or for the, the algorithm just reacts to people. Or the proliferation of, of garbage content on YouTube. We the people are the reason why microtransactions are so incredibly uh, smart to put in your game. All the algorithm is, and this was this was such a great conversation. Well, multiple conversations because I was very resistant to it at first. But um, one of one of my favorite contacts at, at YouTube, um, head of search and discovery, basically has drilled into me and and. He's right. 
every time you open your mouth to say something, something, algorithm, something, 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 try replacing algorithm with the word audience and you will find a much more, uh, you will find a much more accurate understanding of what exactly is going on. So, so this is, this is what ultimately bothered me. Um, for the launch of the 7900 XT and 7900 XTX, AMD played the game. They had two separate embargoes, one for unboxing, or well, three, right? Announcement, unboxing, and then the full review. The unboxing video, which I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna pretend that it's anything other than what it is. Uh, it's, it's low effort content, right? I've got this box. I open it. There's some specs, right? Um, I, I give some thoughts on it, but if I have measured the performance of it, I'm not allowed to tell you, right? We can extrapolate. I feel like we added a little bit of value to some of our, our pre-review coverage of the 7900 series by you know, taking what AMD had provided, recreating that bench as closely as we could, and then, um, and then extrapolating you know, how we would expect it to perform against the competition when AMD wasn't disclosing that. Like, we did everything we could with it, but at the end of the day, that's pretty shallow content. That video ended up with 1.9 million views, took a grand total of about an hour of prep time for someone to just kind of put together a spec list and, uh, you know, grab some cards, some relevant comparison cards off the shelf for me. Then about another 40 minutes of me sitting down in front of a camera. That's it. That is the, the grand total time we spent on it. Okay. Then our full review, and you know, we got to remember too that both of these are, are with us throwing the, the full power of our, you know, our wonderful thumbnail artist Maria and all the expertise we have internally in terms of, of titling videos and uh, you know, trying to create catchy intros and all that kind of stuff. Uh, our full review ended up with a whopping 1.9 million views. Now, that doesn't sound like a problem, right? Yeah, okay, so the unboxing and the review ended up with similar view counts, except for a, a couple of things. Number one is that that review is, in, in my humble opinion, the second best GPU review we've ever done, uh, followed only by the 4070 Ti, and that's only because it came a little bit later once, we'd had, once we got our workflow settled in a little bit better. Um, and number two, it's on a way bigger channel like way bigger. And I'm just, I don't know, man. I'm, I, I feel like I'm rambling a little bit now at this point. I'm just, I'm kind of bothered by how many people look at that short circuit video, which we never call a review. We never, we never put a review in the description. I never say review in the video. The number of people that think it's a review and just the appetite for, for deeper, more analytical content is, is just, not there compared to just this uh this this surface level surface level content so where how did i how did i arrive here <laughs> i don't remember we were talking anymore. about the comment and how you wanted to remove it because it's annoying uh yeah okay i don't it's remember just bad faith arguments like that is really frustrating yeah <clears throat> there you go um Well, I mean, I, don't know. I think it's like you're you're screwed if you do and you're screwed if you don't. Yeah, because I mean, there's no, you know, unless I were to unless I were to publish some kind of, you know, official like, you know, policy, like like a like a code of conduct by which I decide to, you know, if someone is shadow banned or not. Like I I read a particularly frustrating thread on the forum uh, either today or yesterday uh, where there there were a number of people making again these just extraordinarily bad faith arguments. In this case, it was about the screwdriver and the backpack, and uh, one in particular wrote this wall of text about this long after someone challenged them because what they said before was I could go on AliExpress and get that screwdriver in that backpack for a fraction of the price. The cost on that screwdriver is like this low, and someone was like, "Okay, then do do it. Show me." And they wrote this wall of text 
I'm not going to bother because it's not worth my time. But here's all <laughs> the like knowledge I have about how that. Uh, so I replied. I was just like, I will give you ten grand. <laughs> I will give you ten thousand dollars if you can do that. It's worth your time now. It's worth your time now. It's just on AliExpress. Go Where's your it. excuse? Yeah. And it's just like. I don't know how to. I don't know how to have a conversation when the person on the other side of the table is is not capable of existing in the same plane of reality that I'm in. You know, they say, I can get that screwdriver for $10. And I say, you cannot. Would you like to reevaluate your position? No, thank you. <laughs> and I don't, know, I don't know how to deal with that. You know? Yeah. It's like, uh, what, what do you want from me? Do you need my invoices from Megapro, from PH Molds, from ITD Tool and Die? From, do, you, do you, like, we're, we're pretty transparent, actually. Someone's asking if they can enter the contest. Uh, you can't do it. Go for it. You That's can't. That's the whole point. There is, no, there is no AliExpress vendor. Those handles are, are, are injection molded in Pitt Meadows, uh, or excuse me, Maple Ridge, British Columbia. Like, you can't. It yeah. just doesn't work that way. It's not a thing. <laughs> You're missing the point, my dude. Uh, and it's like, it's one of those things where, it, you know, if you were willing to open your eyes and open your mind, you would know. I mean, we have footage of me in the injection molding facility, hand building screwdrivers. Here, <laughs> you know, oh, I just, I, I, I can't. So, um, so and, yeah, go ahead. No, I keep going. I was trying to derail us. So if you have more to say. No, I mean, going. no, it's great. I mean, honestly, like, obviously you guys are, you guys are the Wancho audience. You guys, you guys get it. And you're, you've got my best interests at heart, I think. And you're sitting here going, Linus, don't engage. And you're right. But the thing that you haven't experienced and, you know, one of the reasons that, honestly, you know, Luke or, or, or the other people internally here or my fellow YouTubers or some of the only people that I feel like I can really talk to about these things is that you've never experienced the, these, these thousands or hundreds or even dozens of attacks that come. And you're not allowed to defend generally. And you guys are basically saying, <clears throat> don't defend yourself. But the thing is, is that it doesn't go away. And in some cases, what can happen is it can even grow. And so, you know, I'm kind of looking at it going, you know, okay, uh, a perfect example is when we had that, um, uh, when we had that, uh, that, uh, that sexual assault accusation, right? And I basically took the very controversial internally <laughs> um, move <laughs> Of kind of going, okay, here is my entire relationship history, start to finish. The only part that was controversial with me was the details. <laughs> I, I, didn't, I didn't need to know it tasted like smoke. <laughs> I will never forget that. I just thought it was kind of funny for that one. It was, it was the most memorable thing about it. Sorry, keep going. So I took the controversial move of basically going, okay, fine, then, you know, full transparency. Here's everything. So anything that doesn't match that, I will not be acknowledging because that didn't happen. Um, so now I don't have to talk about it anymore. Uh, but like, there's, there's this, there's kind of this contingent that refuses to acknowledge any sort of, you know, fact or reality and is always just kind of, I mean, haters going to hate, I guess is the bottom line. And it wears on you. Yeah. Like, it really does. And you want to do something about it. And, like, uh, this happened This happened on my on my tour of, of OVH. But there was the, um, do, 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 let me see. Yeah, the RTX 6000. And, like, uh. Who, whose fault is it that there's a card called the RTX 6000? It's well, it's NVIDIA's fault. But I had to say it in the video, and I knew when I said it that people are going to go, huh? 
and there's all the, and this is so light and who cares but there's all these comments everywhere on floatplane on on youtube on everything what an idiot <laughs> that card doesn't exist what a dummy <laughs> and the whole time every single and this is so light compared to what he's talking about but every single time i read that i'm just like man like you uh, ugh, there's a bunch of parts in the video that are not that great like you can call me out on that <laughs> but, but why are you calling me out on this Duh! And then I want to respond to every single one of them. And then yeah. it's just like, okay, no, I need to not do this. Yeah. Because it's just not reasonable. And it, it, like, it bothers you, right? Because, like, especially in cases where you, you know it was, you know you were right, um, you just kind of go, well, now, now you're going to sit and think th that forever. Yeah. And given that our entire job is trying to inform people about technology... I, I, I just like I could sit at my keyboard all day correcting misconceptions, literally all day, and do absolutely nothing else. That'd be a funny video. <sighs> I mean, we've done Linus response to haters, I guess, or no, we've done Linus response to mean comments. You should do like the thumbnails, like you pointing at the screen. It just says you're wrong is the thumbnail. But here's the problem. So we, um, I guess about about six months ago. We created, um, well, I shouldn't say we, James created, oh, maybe more than six, it, it doesn't matter, the timeline doesn't matter. Sometime in the last little while, James created a document called How to Make Good Videos. And in How to Make Good Videos, um, he created a section based on a conversation that we had had called The Laws of Linus. And there's a bunch of really interesting stuff in here that I have... Even though not all of it is actually from me, it was a it was a team effort building building it, and I <clears throat> probably wouldn't have called it that just because it's sort of a silly uh, thing. But it's got he put a well, flex it's a fun arm acronym, right? Yeah, I guess so. Sure. Oh, well. Yeah. So the lols the, the lols <laughs> got him. <laughs> really did like you better when you couldn't talk. <laughs> It's a better show that way. <laughs> so it was a little disheartening how many people were like, "This was the best show." I was like, "All right." <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Speaking of haters, okay, I have to tell you though, and this is the first time I'm telling him on air, but I, I told you after the show last week as well. It is actually far more oh, yeah, helpful yeah, yeah. than you and you guys probably realize to have a, a friendly presence, like essentially a living, breathing laugh track slash supporter just sitting next to you while you ramble on and on about things kind of nodding or raising an eyebrow when you say something stupid like i could imagine at the height of the pandemic you know being an athlete oh, performing in an yeah. empty stadium yeah you know i don't know did did, did i play that shot good you know like <laughs> there's no, no feedback there's no feedback whatsoever yeah. and it really does it really does get you going. Anyway, mm -hmm. back to the laws of Linus. Uh, one of the laws is never insult the audience. Um, it doesn't go well. Yeah, and I do it from time to time. I break the rules. Uh, you know, someone on... I honestly feel more liberated with the float plane audience because realistically, they pay for the subscription. They're probably hardcore. They can probably handle it. And, you know, every once in a while, you know, there'll be a brain dead enough take that I'm just like, you know what? No, we're going to we're going to talk about this because that's that's pretty bad. But I shouldn't. I shouldn't because hold on, I'm trying to find the bloody part of it. This is driving me absolutely crazy. OK, fine. I will resort to find and replace Uh Ins is it insult or no it must be attack guys i'm, I'm fine you don't have to yeah here it to. is do not personally attack the viewer no matter how wrong or stupid their beliefs are not even an implied attack and this has actually helped us a lot over the last little while because there have been a few videos where we you know we'd make an offhand joke say for example about like ddr2 memory you know being old and it's like, well, hold on a second. In a lot of parts of the world, DDR2 it's is like, like still current. expensive and yeah. still current. And it's easy to live in our in our North American bubble and to and it's not even necessarily wrong to live in our North American bubble because that's where solid like almost 60% of our viewership comes from with 
probably another 30 percent from, you know, Western uh, Western Europe. So like your Germany's and, and UK's and France's of the world, places like that. Um, yeah. But you've got to understand that when you are broadcasting to literally millions of people, if only one percent of them are personally attacked by what you say, then you just upset a thousand, ten thousand people for what? Yeah. What why? Benefit? To what end? Yeah. Like why? So one of the things that I'll do during script review with people now is I'll say like, hey, um, why are we poking fun at people who liked Windows Vista? That's just just an example. Why are we doing that? And they're like, because it's funny, because they're dumb. I'm like, well, A, I like Windows Vista. <laughs> not so funny now, is it? <laughs> but that's not even the point, because B, who cares? Is there a benefit? Yeah. And yeah. honestly, this is something where Yvonne has been a really good influence on me, because she has basically said, hey, look, I think that you're too aggro. And I think that you're going to catch a lot more flies with honey than with vinegar. And she's, she's right. I have basically never won. I, I shouldn't say I, I have never. I, I have rarely witnessed like a, an aggressive approach winning an argument on the internet. Think about it. I, so I, I agree with the statement in general. I think sometimes it is not okay. So this is a, this is a tech channel. We're talking about tech topics. Yeah. So it should basically always be honey because who cares? Sure. But I don't think this applies to all arguments one could have, if that makes sense. <sighs> We've talked about this before. I don't remember how I phrased it, but I think it was like sometimes you want to catch them with the vinegar or whatever. Like I. There's certain times where, like, I'm not willing to acknowledge any potential benefits of the argument on the other side. So I'm not going to approach it. With but money. you don't have to acknowledge merit. You don't have to acknowledge any merit of their argument when there isn't any. But you could acknowledge maybe how they feel. No. Okay. There's cer there are certain arguments where I, I think no. Um, there is not, like, a ton of them necessarily. But there are certain arguments where I think no. That's fair. I don't know. Intolerance will not be tolerated. Yeah. Which, yeah, I mean, that's fair enough. 